the fourth aspect of mentoring is ministry apprenticeship. Ministry apprenticeship. Ministry can start as soon as a person becomes a believer and there are three aspects to it. The first one is opportunities to observe. Opportunities to observe. The twelve observed Jesus, how he interacted with people, how he told stories, how he tried to take rest, how he talked to the Jewish leaders, how he argued with, with those who tried to trap him. They, they learned by observation. So at home I let my kids see whatever they can see in the house. So if we have to set the TV up, so I show them how to set the TV up. You know, I, I want them to see every task in the house that there possibly is. So that when they become adults and they're like, oh yeah, I remember watching my dad one time dismantle the dryer and put it back together. You know, I want them to, to, to remember that. What's that? I did that, yeah. I, a dryer wasn't working, so I pulled up some YouTube videos, pulled out the back of it, and found the wires and did something. It was an old dryer. It failed again after a few months, but it survived for a few months. Um, but your son will Yeah, my son remember it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was in Kansas City. This was in the Kansas City house, yeah. They were younger that time. So we need to give them different opportunities or let them see different opportunities as available, right? They can come with you on ministry trips just to see. They don't need to do anything, just see for the first time. And then they have opportunities to minister. And they start with small tasks. So the disciples started with small tasks. Clean up after the feeding, help with the feeding, go get the colt, uh, do a little preaching, do some baptizing, and then do some exorcism. So they were given little tasks. Same thing with Paul. He learned from Barnabas. So Barnabas invited Paul uh, as his disciple. They went to Antioch and they taught the whole year among the Grecian Christians that were there. You always start with small tasks. I, I remember when I was back in training in, in Kansas City, doing a surgical training, the interns, the first year interns, they do all the dirty work. So, you know, yeah. but and the smallest thing that we do in the surgery is what is called as retraction. So we, you know, once somebody uh, cuts the skin and opens it, you stand there with retractors holding the tissue apart while the surgeon does the work. And you, so, so, we, so as an intern, I would do that. I mean, I would, so they would cut and then I would open, stand there. Some cases go from an hour to 12 hours and you're standing there, you know, until you get spasm in your hands. You're just standing there. And then the other task you do is you suction. So as they're working, you suck, 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 because the field needs to be clear. The surgical field needs to be clear. So when I became a chief and I had interns, um, I would do the same thing, you know, they would, they would have to retract the tissues, you know, let's say that I was removing a tumor or a, whatever, salivary gland or whatever, I cut the neck open and uh, the, the interns would be standing there holding the suction and the retractor and uh, they would start with that small job. And if they didn't screw up, they could get better tasks. And the usual better task that we gave interns was to close up after everything was done. So after I took out, let's say, the salivary gland, I tested the nerve to the tongue and nerve to the, uh, two nerves to the tongue and so on. And then I would let the interns close up. And closing up is not simple because if you screw it up, you can get fistulas that come out and the skin will be all distorted. So we close the muscle first and then we close the subcutaneous fascia and then we close the skin on top of that. But if it's not done properly, the skin will be in all different shapes. So we let the interns start to sew the muscle up. And if they do that properly, they'll do, they do the next layer up, next layer up. And soon, they do the entire closing. So we do the surgery, they do the closing. And as you come up the ranks, you do bigger and bigger surgeries. Until finally, you are doing the entire case by yourself from start to finish. And that's how it was with the disciples. In mentoring, you start with small tasks. You give them a little bit, see how they do. In fact, many times, even new believers will find out what their ministry calling is when we give them small tasks. They'll find, man, I love to do this kind of stuff. Sure, maybe that's your ministry calling. 
when I was in Kansas City and uh, finishing up, I was, the, I was the small group leader for the longest time there. And then when we were winding down, I stopped being a small group leader because we were winding down and we gave opportunities to different people to lead. Um, one of them was a lawyer that was in our group. And so after he led, I went to him, I said, brother, I think you have a gift. You should pursue uh, spiritual leadership um, and, and, and work. And uh, so I don't know how it turned out because we left after that. I think he, he ended up being a leader of some sort in the church, but I'm, but I'm not sure. But, but, you know, give ministry opportunities to people where they exhibit faithfulness. All right, the third aspect of ministry apprenticeship is debriefing. Very, very critical. Very, very critical. You talk about what went right, what went wrong, what could be done better, how we could have answered something better. When you have a conversation with a person, don't have his mother and his siblings there, take him outside, you know, a debriefing session. A debriefing session. And this happened with the disciples, right? The 70 went out and did ministry. They came back and they had a debriefing session with Jesus. The 12 disciples did ministry, came back, had a debriefing session. In Matthew chapter 17, it talks about how uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration, after the Transfiguration, they were coming down and the nine disciples down there, they didn't know how to, um, well, they tried to heal a boy with seizures, but it didn't work. So Jesus came, he chided them a little bit, he did uh, heal the boy, and then it says in verse 19, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why couldn't we cast it out? You see, that is a debriefing session. That is a debriefing session. 